Sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul. Sweet Spirit, sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete, my rest is complete while I sit at your feet. Sweet Spirit, sweep over my soul. Yet a great opportunity for me Amen. to stand again before you the great redeemed of the Lord. Uh, you are a great audience. It is my second service and I'm already in love with all of you. Yes, yes uh, it's wonderful. I must give a short testimony. Brother Gerald and my wife are a witness. I was working on a sermon all week when he asked me to take the second service. All week, you know how it is. Middle of the night, you get up, you jot down a point. During the day, you jot down a point. So yesterday afternoon, I was revising the notes. My wife came in to do something, and she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm revising the notes for tomorrow. I put the notes somewhere. When I went to sleep, midnight, this. I said, where did I put those notes? So I'm up since midnight. I tiptoed down. I looked, I actually moved the bins and everything. I checked in the fridge at our age, you know. I checked in the freezer, because the other day she was putting sugar in the fridge. We're, we're there now. Believe me, I couldn't find the notes. So at seven this morning, I said, Lord, your ways are mysterious. You probably don't want that sermon for today. It's for another time. So he gave me a fresh sermon, which I trust will be addressing some events Amen. that are currently happening. As well, Brother Gerald, you listen carefully, my brother, as well as last Sunday's first service here. Amen. I found it in the scriptures. I found it in the scriptures. So as Brother Gerald came to pick me up, I had finished Zooming to our church in South Africa. When he picks me up, I've just finished. And they fell out of this Bible, those notes. <laughs> but I had already prepared these ones. Amen. So God wants this sermon this morning. Amen. Shall we stand to our feet? Amen. And I'm impressed, Brother Gerard. 30 minute song service, testimonies, straight to the word. Amen. People are like sponges. If you overfill them, they get only one quarter of the sermon. You must catch them while they are fresh. And then you let them go, they'll come back again. God bless you. Let us read while we are standing. Why do we stand? Remember, I'm more of a teacher than a preacher, so I like to teach. The Bible says in the book of Nehemiah, when they had lost the scrolls, they were recleaning the temple to rebuild. Then they found the scrolls of Moses. When Ezra opened those scrolls, the people, out of respect, they stood to their feet. It's not a, it's not a dogma. Yeah. It's obedience to the word. I'll give you the scriptures as we go along. Our first scripture will be Exodus 12. I normally keep it to one hour, so don't panic. I won't take you 40 years through the wilderness. The bride does not go through the tribulation. Amen. Exodus 12, and I'm going to be a little slower so that we can all imbibe, digest what the sermon is about. I believe today will be just as important as any other day. Amen. We now read Exodus 12, if you have found it, and allow me to pick verse 1 and 6. Amen. Exodus 12, 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, that was now last month, April. Amen. Don't mix it up. This month was last month, April. 
this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. We start in January, but the Jews start in March. Hence, when you read the Bible, it might be confusing. Always add or minus three months, then you know where you are. This month, let's say then, this April shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Israel is the only country that has two beginning of the months. Two beginnings. One is April, one is September at the Feast of Trumpets. One is called religious beginning, it's this one. The other one is called civil beginning, teaching. Now we pick up verse 6. That April, more than 2,000 years ago, and you shall keep it, the lamb, up until, please read with me, 14th day of the same month. That's all I'm going to read. Remember the date, 14th of April. You may take your seats, but please find Numbers 9, Numbers 9, and then we want to read selectively Numbers 9, 5 to 11. I'm going to wait for you all. Those of you who would like to jot down the scriptures, you are most welcome, because I do believe that uh, if you miss anything, either you get it on video or you can reread. Numbers 9. Reminds me many years ago when I was also new in Christ. I didn't even know where Genesis was. Can you believe it? Being the first Bible, uh, my first Bible, I went to, to the index, which helps sometimes. Yeah. And then it'll tell you that numbers in my Bible starts at page 200 and something. So it helps you to get there. Allow me to read with you Numbers 9. And listen again very carefully. Something is going to change here in Numbers 9, verse 5. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. Can we say amen? amen? Well done. They did what Moses said do. At evening, wonderful. That's why communion is to be done in the evening. In the wilderness of Sinai, wonderful. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. But watch from verse 6. Something's going to change. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back? Wherefore are we refused? that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. A great lesson that the day this church is to have communion, don't rush into it. If in that month something happened that has defiled you, you'd rather skip it for the next month. Because Moses kept them back. And Moses says in verse 8, read with me, And Moses said unto them, Stand still. And I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Not concerning the rest of us. The rest of us, we kept it on the right, right date. But concerning you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Oh, this verse 10. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you, or of your posterity, that includes us, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, that is, having one other reason to miss communion, yet you shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. When, Lord? But we missed the first date. Verse 11. The 14th day of the what? Second month. So my title is going to be Second Chances. Amen. At our second service. <laughs> yes. 
I see why the Holy Spirit wanted this sermon to be fitting. Last week when we started, what date was it? The 15th. The day after the second month. We were on time. Scripturally, we started on time. Because the 14th, when it comes over to another country, is the morning of the 15th. Correct? Am I correct? There's no doubt then that this church is going somewhere. God bless you, Brother Joe. Now we shall begin. I would like you to write the scripture on the side. It's not part of the sermon. This road is called Great Hallwood. It's got wood in it. Write down Jeremiah 5, 14. I won't read it. You will read it. God says, I will make my words fire. And I will make the people wood. So what happens when you combine wood with fire? There's a flame. This place is going to burn for the glory of God. Allow me to begin and I want you to relax. When I see as a teacher of almost 50 years that you are losing me, you are becoming sleeping virgins, I will throw in a quip or two just to attract you, okay? Because some people find it much better to sleep in church than at home. <laughs> because at home, maybe the, name, the neighbors were having a Goomba Goomba party all night. You know, the dogs were barking and the cats were meowing. So they come to church, they fall asleep. I always have this warning. I found it in the scriptures. Never do three things. Please don't forget them all your life. Never come late to church. Because Ananias' wife, Sapphira, she came late. And she didn't know her husband had lied in church and died. Had she come on time, while he was lying, she would have time to repent. You know that's in Acts chapter 5. The church was as young as five chapters. They had received the Holy Ghost in chapter 2. And in chapter 5, people were already lying and dying. Had she come on time, remember that, she would have said, the Holy Spirit has struck my husband dead because they were in a scheme. She would have repented. Number two, never sleep in church. Eutychus tried it on Pastor Paul and he fell from a window loft and died. So don't come to die in church. It's a place of life. Had it been that Paul did not have the resurrecting power, Eutychus would have been taken to the grave. So if you want to sleep on any preacher, make sure he's got the power of the resurrection. Third thing you must never do, never miss church if you can help it. Because Thomas missed just one service, and it happened to be the service where Jesus appeared. Can you see the validity of what I'm saying? After the resurrection, he appeared among them, and one, for whatever reason, did not come to church. So can you imagine the next morning, a Monday morning, they said, Jesus appeared. He probably said, why does he always appear when I'm not there? No, Jesus is not going to wait for us. He's going to do what he has to do. We must be at our post of duty. I now begin, and this is going to be a little deep as we go along, but I believe the Holy Spirit will, if you don't catch it in church, He takes the next day and the next day to unwind it. I may get a little stimulated along the way. In fact, if you allow me, I can take my jacket off. God bless you. There's no scripture that says you must preach with a jacket. It's merely a tradition which we follow. And uh, sometimes we take it off. They once criticized an evangelist in my early days that uh, would preach without a jacket 
It was in the newspapers. They thought he was disrespectful. You know what he did? When he came into the pulpit, he took the jacket, he hung it over the microphone, and he said, Jacket, preach! <laughs> then they realized that it is not the jacket that preaches. It is the person. Thank you, my brother. God gives us second chances, folks. Here it is in our scripture reading. When people miss the original date, God extended it to the next date. Are we still together? It's a merciful God that we are serving. And I'm going to take you through scriptures for a while to lay my foundation where God does things the second time. Amen. And the first one, there are many, but the first one to keep it within one hour is Genesis 22. And it's verse 15. I'm not going to read it. I will quote. Only if I say, let's read together. You listen attentively. Abram is taking Isaac up to the mountain to prefigure Calvary. He's going to offer his only beloved son. Amen. Can you see it's a prefigure of Calvary? Yes, As I've said before, I don't know whether here or somewhere else, Isaac is carrying the wood. Christ is carrying the cross. Amen. They are going up Mount Moriah. That's where the Temple Mount is. We know it as Mount Zion, but originally it's Moriah. That rock over which the dome is built is the exact stone where he would have offered Isaac. That's why the Jews wanted back to rebuild the third temple. Abram typing the father is holding the knife in the fire to slit his throat and ignite the wood. Right? I think we preached it last week, sparked it when he said, Father, where's the lamb? But today I want to take it a little further. After the angel stops Abram, the Bible says, and the angel of God called to Abram the second time. And said, because you did not withhold your only son from me. Now I will bless you. Can you see the blessing comes on the second chance? Amen. Now, I travel a lot through Israel. You've heard me say, the Lord wills we have a trip in October. I was in a little Palestinian town called Arad. Early morning, because I'm a guide, I eat early, and then when the people come from their rooms, I welcome them. We offer prayer over the food and then eat and go. I'm reading the Bible and this Arab is cleaning the floors. He keeps coming around me because he's never seen the Bible before. So he says, what are you reading? I said, I'm reading the Bible. He says, my original one is black. He says, why is it black? I said, that's just a cover. They come in black, red, green, whatever. He says, oh, okay. So where are you reading it? Wow, look at this question. I said, I'm reading Genesis 22, where God says to Abram, offer your only son. He protests. He says, no, 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 no. Your Bible is wrong. The Quran says he took Ishmael. I said, sir, you just haven't read my Bible right. I said, it's the way you called him. Are you listening? It's the way you called him. He said, Abraham. Take your only son. If he said Abram, he would have taken Ishmael. Because Ishmael was fathered while he was Abram, and then Abram had a second name. Can you see those second chances? When God renamed him Abraham, then he fathered Isaac. So there's no mistake, I said. He said, take your only son as Abraham. When he took his son, his second son. You see, those seconds. God says, now I'll bless you. Watch, I will multiply your seed. 
and fill up the earth like the sands of the sea. Today that seed is not only the Jewish people, it includes, includes you Amen. by being children of Abraham through faith. Amen? Amen? Pharaoh dreams a dream. Now you've got to know that when he dreamt the first dream, it was to do with either the lean wheat swallowing up the fat wheat. He woke up, he didn't understand. He went back to sleep and God came for the second time. Gave him the same dream but used other symbols. I hope you're learning. This time he sees seven lean cows swallowing seven fat ones. He doesn't know what it means. He calls his magicians and all his false interpreters. False interpreters of the word. They are plentiful today. They say, we don't know what it means. But one of them says, I know a man I was in prison with. Pharaoh says, you must be joking. We are Zalam Fana. You're going to bring me a prisoner. <laughs> Nobody can tell God who should be the preacher. Yeah. He chooses whomsoever he will. He says, okay, bring him here. And Joseph says, O oh, king, these two sevens in your dreams symbolize seven years of plentiful harvest and the other seven famine. So my advice the first seven years of plenty, build silos and storerooms. And when they did that, Egypt was saved from two dreams. One dream that came back the second time. Therefore, we learn in the scriptures, even in the book of Daniel, I could take you through there, but it'll take time, that when you see the dream of Nebuchadnezzar of the head of gold, the arms of silver, brass, iron. That vision is repeated for the second time by a lion coming out of the sea, huh? <laughs> followed by a bear with two paws. Look at me. Then followed by the bronze Alexander the Great, Grecian Empire. Then followed by the Roman Empire, the legs of iron. Same vision, different symbols. Therefore we have learned that if you dream something, not all dreams are from the Lord. Some of them are from the devil. But if you dream a dream that you think is from the Lord and you wake up and you don't quite remember but you know it's from the Lord, you can hold God to account. We have a sister here who's very good at accounting. You can hold God to account to say, you sent me a dream the first time. I didn't quite catch it. Send it the second time. And when he sends it the second time, he simplifies the symbols for you. My wife here has witnessed, I don't want to scare you, but I'm a dreamer since a little boy, even before Christ found me, because the gift is with you when you were born. I once dreamt my neighbor just down the road, I saw them carry her out with a coffin. I was sitting with my sister-in-law, and I said, you know, my uh, sister-in-law, Betty was the name. I said, Betty, I've had a strange dream. I saw Ma Delizana, that is the mother of Delizan. Um, I saw Ma Delizana being carried out to be buried. And she said, don't tell people such things. They'll think we are witches. You know how it is out there in Africa. Three weeks down the line, Ma Delizana is being carried out to be buried. Then in the message, I'm already a pastor 25 years. I'll be a pastor now 50 years next year. So 25 years ago, I dream, I see my elder, a brother that started with me. I won't call his name, he's passed on to glory. 
But he's standing there, are you looking at me? And he's holding the hand of a 12-year-old girl. And in the dream, I understand it's his daughter. But in real life, when he comes to church, he hasn't got that child. I told my wife, she said, that one is too direct. You better go see the family. Do you think it's easy? I went to see him, call his wife. I asked the kids to be excused because of the nature of the dream. I'm still on dreams. I said, brother so-and-so, this is my dream. The brother goes, wow. He goes wailing and crying. The wife is shocked. He said, I've lived with this for 12 years. As a taxi driver, he had fallen with one of the passengers, if you know what I mean, and fathered that daughter. And he didn't know how to confess it. God so loved him that he gave him a second. The brother made right with his wife. She was forgiving. And not long after, he crossed over. But this one, the next one, I'm going to catch your attention so I can continue. I dream, my wife and I were working for Siemens. I dream I hear a voice saying, go tell Judy Maitland, the colored lady, she must run to the cross. That's all I heard. I wake up, I tell my wife, we're on the way to work. Judy Maitland, how can I put it, dear? Because she's now in the message. I must put it very politely. Judy Maitland at the time was a lady of the night with the Germans. They worked on the floor where there were only women. So if Germans wanted a girl for the weekend, they came to that floor and just... I must now, as a message believer, go up to that floor of women only and go look for Judy Maitland. And then when I got to the door, I was with a brother in the message. He forsook me. He said, I'm not going in. Because I already told him, I'm going to have to tell Judy I had a dream about her. You think it's easy? He drops me at the door, I walk in. They start whistling. Because they knew me formerly as a singer. I was handsome in my days, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> so they are whistling, like here comes a former pop star, but I'm not interested in that. I asked the supervisor, where's Judy Maitland sitting at? They say, over there. They start whistling now, because I'm going toward Judy Maitland. As I approach Judy Maitland, she's seated at the work table. I was young, I was inexperienced. So all I said, I said, Judy, I had a dream about you. The whole floor laughed. The devil said, you better run out. He's tried to stop me from giving you the message. After they laughed and, and died down, I said, Judy, a voice said to tell you, run to the cross, and I ran out. Judy still went on with her life, but I'm happy to report that she now believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. So dreams are sometimes direct, sometimes they are symbolic. You have to have the know-how how to interpret them. Joshua circumcised the children of Israel in Joshua 5, verse 2, the second time before they entered the promised land. Can you see the seconds? They were not ready to enter the promised land until the second time circumcision. That's why Jesus taught from that shadow, you must be born Listen to what I'm going to say next. We won't be long. If you are born once through the mother, you will die twice. If you are going to depend on only the first birth, you will die the death of the flesh and the death of the soul. But if you are born twice, you may not even die once because the rapture is coming. Watch the reverse. Watch the reverse. This is beautiful. If you are born once, you will die twice. If you are born twice, you may die once or not even at all. 
It's that circumcision. That's why Paul says, I die daily. Don't be happy with, I received the Holy Ghost 25 years ago. Call for it every day. Can you give me some more, Lord? Can you give me some more? Because that's what keeps us on the road. Or else can I give you a scripture? Did not the wise virgins have oil with the foolish virgins at the beginning? So why did the foolish virgins' oil run out? They didn't call for it for the second time, and the second time, and the second time. These are Bible teachings. They had oil in their vessels together with the wise. The wise kept refilling. They did not. David, when he fought Goliath, folks, he had to do two things. First, hit him with a stone. Goliath wasn't listening carefully when David said, I killed a lion, I killed a bear, I will kill you too. It never sank into Goliath's head like the stone did. <laughs> so when he hit him with that stone, and I believe you've been to the river where David picked up the stone. Have you ever been there? Okay, you don't remember. It's a, it's a rivulet between the two mountains of Judah and Philistia. We go there every year. Every year we bring some pebbles. Brother Gerald and the rest of the congregation, I used to think David used a boulder like that. Only to find out the size of those little rocks. This small. Almost the size of your eye. So, Goliath didn't see it coming. And God, I believe, directed the stone because... Goliath was armor all the way, says the Bible, from the head to the toe. But you see the aperture where he had to look through. The stone was just the right size to go through. So nothing ever sank into Goliath's mind as deep as that day. So when he fell, David had to do a second thing. Go take his own sword, Goliath's sword, and behead him. He had to do it twice. So sometimes the devil will attack you. You know what I'm talking about, the rest of you. Amen. You take his very weapon and go kill him. I've had my sixth chemo on Friday. They rang the bell, you were right. And they said, any speech, uh, they called me Mr. Martin. Some of them already know I'm pastor. I've witnessed to quite a few nurses, believe me. I'm about to go tell them how it is the place. Because they wanted to know, where do you keep church? I said, Oy, I don't have church around here. But now, when I go for my final, what do they call it, final results? Because there's going to be radiotherapy. I'll tell them. So they said, your final words, Mr. Martin. I said, all these things you've been pumping into me, this is the scripture that kept me, and if they shall drink any deadly thing, because they're putting it into you, it will not hurt them. Thank you, sister. They said, you're looking good, Mr. Martin. I don't know if I should tell them. They want me to speak on TV for NHS. They say, we've never had a cancer patient other than a few, I think they may be referring to you, Edna, so positive that you kept saying, the great physician is in charge. The great physician. They thought I'm talking of Dr. Dangawala. I kept saying, the great physician. They thought it's Yasmin Mohammed. In my heart, I said, it's not time yet. I'll tell you who he is. So if they shall drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Now the next scripture. David sings on his harp in Psalms 51, 12. And he says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Notice those two things. David never said, Restore my salvation. Because once you are saved, you are saved. He died once, says the scriptures, went into the holies of holies in heaven. Your salvation is secured. But Satan will attack your joy. 
like he's attacking you one way, attacking you another way. And he's been attacking me the last four months this way. But my salvation is secured. So all I need to do and all you need to do is when you are going through a trial, call for the second part. Lord, restore my joy. In 1 Kings 9, God appears to Solomon for the second time. The first time was when Solomon asked for wisdom. The second time God brings him the blessings. He says, I have hallowed this house which you have built. And my name and my eyes will be upon it perpetually. You see, when God comes the second time, there's a seal to it. Elijah is running away from Jezebel. It's amazing how an anointed prophet runs away from a woman. Sometimes running away may be just for you to rest. God wanted Elijah to rest out there in the wilderness. And the Bible says, and the angel touched him for the second time and said, arise and eat. I'm not far from closing, but listen carefully. Whenever you have seconds, and I'm not talking about when we are going to have sandwiches after church. You're welcome to have seconds. But please watch this, and I want you to not miss it. Why is there first and second Samuel in the Bible? Why is there first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, first and second Corinthians, First and second Thessalonians, watch me. First and second Timothy, watch me. First and second Peter, watch those numbers. There are seven books in the entire Bible, seven for completion. And these seven have one and second, one and second. I know what you're going to ask me, and I'm ready. What about John? There's first John, second John, third John. The only book in the Bible that's got three. Because John types the bride. He types you and me. We are the people of the third pool. What is the third pool? When they were fishing, they had to pull the nets. First what comes up are your water spiders and your crabs. Keep pulling to the third. There's fish there. So when people are hooked to the gospel... Keep preaching the gospel, keep pulling, keep pulling, real fish will come. Now, we visit the land of Iran, Tehran. Esther was queen there. Haman, the hater of the Jews, anti-type of Hitler. Watch, even the names both begin with H. Haman hated the Jews. Haman wanted to obliterate the Jewish nation from Europe at that time. Hitler comes along, a man dies, but his spirit carries on. Hitler comes along, he picks up the same spirit, he tries to holocaust the Jews. Both have failed. But when The virgins, I'm quoting Esther 2 verse 19. When the virgins gathered for the second time, it says Mordecai drew near to the gate. Mordecai is from the tribe of Benjamin. And in Revelation 7, little Benjamin is part of the 144,000 of the Jews that will be called when we, the last day bride, Second virgin from Paul's age are in the palace. Mordecai must move closer to the gates. That's where we are in 2022. In Isaiah 11, 11, God says, looking at the diaspora of the Jews, after AD 70 when they were scattered to all the nations and they returned in 1948, God already prophesied in Isaiah 11, 11, I shall set out my hand for the second time to recover the children of Israel. And he did it in 1948. The Bible is the only book that you can 
bank your life on. You can invest your life in the Bible and you will draw dividends and interest. We are closing very soon. In Mark 8, there's a blind man. Jesus lays his hand on him and the man opens his eyes. I hope you're listening. And he says, I see men as trees. Jesus touches him for the second time. And the Bible says, he saw every man clearly. We all need a second touch, folks. And I don't see it as an accident why something was burning around Milton Keynes, as you told me, and it seemed like it was lost. Look at God extending his second touch. I believe as we go along, this place will fill up for the glory of God. We are not talking like the charismatics. We are talking of elected seed. Those whose names are in the Lamb's book of life, the message will find them in this place. Did you ever read John 4, 54? That I would like for us to read before we close. John 4, 54. Everybody knows, as you find John 4, 54, everybody knows about Jesus turning water into wine. Oh, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. especially former drinkers. While we were finding John 4, 54, I remember while I was still working for Siemens, I attracted the attention of the company boss. When you have Christ in you, they will like you. For whatever reason, you are like Joseph in Egypt. They see God is blessing you. So they held end of the year party. They decorated the company. They laid out the tables. And I got a call from my little office. <clears throat> Mr. Kopanski wants to see you in his office. Well, I thought, what did I do wrong? I ran up to his office. He says, oh, uh, down, uh, down a third floor, the tables are laid out, champagne, wine, whatever. I want you to bless the table. Oh, my goodness. I hear you are a preacher other than working here. I said, Mr. Kopanski, you can tell he was Russian, German. I said, I'm sorry. I, I cannot do that, even at the risk of you firing me. He says, but Jesus turned water into wine. I said, Mr. Kopanski, remove all those wines and all those spirits and gins. Fill the glasses with water. If they turn into wine, I will drink it with you. I took the challenge and threw it back at him. I said, you pray, I pray, if it turns into wine, we'll drink it, because you see, that wine that Jesus created did not have intoxication. It was good for the party, while the party lasted, they did not have Baba last the next day. <laughs> you know what? He excused me. And you know what he said? He says, I'll, I'll find one of these backslidden preachers. When I pay them, they will bless the table. And that's what he did. But he respected me till I resigned to go into the ministry. And he said, as long as I need to come back. Is that right, Porsche? He says, your job is open for you. Well, it's been 40 years now. But that's when you make an impression. But how many know that Jesus had a second miracle? Let's go to John 4:54. Oh, this one's going to bless your heart, the seconds. John 4, 54. This is, again, the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. So what is this miracle? You have to read all of that chapter. You see, the first miracle, Jesus did not pray over the water. Oh, read your Bible. He just said, fill up the drums, six of them. Why? Because he was the seventh mysterious one. Amen. The seventh drum was going to bless the six. And he simply said, fetch and give to the people. He didn't say, Lord, bless this one. He was God. He spoke the word. And water turned to wine. 
The second miracle he spoke the word to was to do with the son of a Roman centurion who had fever. When the servants came and said, our master, the centurion, begs your company to come to him from Nazareth, which you've been to, to Tiberias the sea. It's almost a whole day's walk if you don't have transport. Jesus just said, go. You will find the boy healed. When they arrived, the boy was healed. And the question was asked, what time was he healed? They said, at this time during the day. Then it occurred to the Roman centurion that the same time Jesus spoke the word over there, the boy was healed over there. I'm not against prayer lines. I do have them once in a while. But we are trying to get the church to come up to where the word is spoken. And there are many who do not understand this concept of speak the word because nothing impressed Jesus more than the other centurion that said, just speak the word. You don't have to come to my house. Just speak it. I'll believe it. Jesus said, my goodness, all of Israel that I'm sent to the first time, because he knew the second time would be us. You see first and second? He says, they have not this faith. But look at this Gentile man. It's not yet time for the Gentiles. And the man is already calling for the spoken word. Let's give God the praise. So the second time is you, folks. Now let me go a little deeper for the last 10 minutes or so. Yes. I want you to pause. Put on your spiritual thinking cap and your anointing jacket. Take a deep breath. This teaching in my church took me six Sundays. I'm going to summarize it in three minutes. The days of creation have a formula. Are you ready to write it down, please? Please write it down because without this formula, you'll just read and everything will be all mixed up. But there is a hidden formula. Write it down, one and four. I'll simplify it. One and four. Under that, write two and five. Under that, write three and six. And under that, write seven. I'll repeat. One and four. Two and five. Three and six. And seven. You may ask me after church. How did you find this formula? I'll tell you. It's because the first day, one and four, the first day, are you listening? God says, let there be light. It's only on the fourth day he appoints the sun to give light during the day, the moon and the stars at night. So first day and fourth day I linked light. You might want to write next to it, light. Then on the second day, God created the oceans, the seas, and the waters. Why? Because on the fifth day, he's going to put fish and marine life in the oceans. So you may want to write marine life or aquatic life. Then you come to the third day, God created the grass, the trees, and the herbs. Why? Because on the sixth day, he's going to create cattle, sheep, goats to graze the grass, man to eat the fruit and the herbs. And on the seventh day, he rested. There's your formula. One, four. Two, five. Three, six. Seven is on its own. And the entire story of creation becomes as simple as A, B, C. Now, just to prep you up, when you speak of seconds, and I'm closing in perhaps seven minutes, I don't mean this guy. He goes to a department store, breaks into a clothing store, the cameras pick him up, the alarm goes off, they see him grabbing a dress, he runs out, the police are still coming. 
While the police are coming, he comes back. Second time. He puts back the first dress, he takes a second one. And they nab him at the door. They say, you've come into the store twice. Here's the evidence. What's this? He says, the first time I broke in because my wife wanted a certain dress. That's when you saw me run out with it. When I got there, she says, wrong size, wrong color. <laughs> so I came back the second time. We don't mean that second time. We are keeping it scriptural. Now the last six minutes. You will find time, promise me, to read Psalms 19, verse 5. David begins to look into the heavens. And we are now going to address the events of last Sunday. He says, as you and the sun, he's addressing the solar system. The solar system, we know, circulating around it are the zodiac signs, zodiacal signs, 12 of them. We each one of us fall under one of those stars. And then beyond the zodiacal signs are your planets and their moons. They are all held in line by the SUN, the sun, gravitational pull. When I was at school, they only had nine. When I came into the message, I said to the church, they must be 12 to fit the 12 sons of Jacob. And now they've discovered three more. So there are 12 now. See, the scripture cannot lie. So David then says that S-U-N is as a bridegroom. Don't miss that. He says the son is like the husband. So who's the wife? But he reveals the wife in a hidden way. He says... The sun is as a bridegroom that comes out of a chamber. You know what the chamber is? Bedroom. So if the sun is the husband and comes out of the bedroom, who is in the bedroom? The moon. The moon is always a type of the wife to the sun. Why? The moon does not have its own light. You know that. It reflects the light of the sun to the earth. The church hasn't got its own light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So we reflect him. Are we still on track? That's why in Malachi 4 verse 2, it speaks of God as the S-U-N, the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. Watch. When the Son of Righteousness with healing his wings became flesh, he was then the S-O-N. The S-U-N now becomes the S-O-N with healing in his wings. You know, Jonah didn't go to Nineveh the first time. Jonah 3 verse 1. God had to speak to him the second time. Peter never remembered the words of Jesus until the cock crowed twice. Uh, can you see those two? I'm coming. I'm coming. Now we want to close with the month of May. And I'm getting goosebumps now. Give me three minutes. Brother Gerald, you started at the right time. Those who missed the Passover in April were given an opportunity in May. Maybe we've missed the opportunity to start here for a long time. And God says, I'm giving you a second chance. In the month of May 2022, God put it in our brother's heart to find this place. Invite whosoever will. And here we are. But as we close, I sincerely believe that the blood moon of last Sunday, second month, 
exact date is a warning. The Jews are crying to lay their foundation as we are laying a foundation here. Remember what you said to me in the car? Lay the cornerstone. The Jews are crying. They want to lay a foundation stone to build the third temple where Solomon had the temple. You know why? Write this scripture down. 1 Kings 6. 1 Kings 6. This you must write down. Verse 1 and 37. That is, you read verse 1 and 37. 1 Kings 6, verse 1 and 37. Are you ready to be blessed, Brother Gerald? The foundation stone of Solomon's temple was laid in May. Are you ready for some more? Two minutes to go? Thank you. I know, I know, I know. God bless you, dear. You are so sweet. Now, May in Hebrew is called Zif. You may write it down because you'll find it in your Bible search. Z-I-F or Z-I-F, Zif. Are you ready for a blessing? Zif stands for light and balance. Z-I-F, Zif, the month of May. Joel 2, 31, this one you know already. God said in the last days, he will give warnings in the heavens by showing us blood moons. We've had several blood moons over the years, especially severely from 2018 to 2022. But the one of last week differs from all of them because it's the first one that fell on the second Passover. Remember, if you miss the past, the first Passover, you're given a second. The one of last week, Brother Gerald, I'm getting sweats. While we were singing here, the moon was rising in the heavens. As a witness, God does it in the heavens first, the Magi's. Did not God put a star up there in the heavens to tell him there was a star on earth? When God does it in the heavens, look up! Something is happening on the earth. I'm closing with very explosive points. Give me half a minute. Joe Biden, Joseph Biden, the president of the USA, is the second president Catholic since 1776. The forefathers and the founding fathers of America in their constitution, I read it, I've been to Washington DC, I've been to the museum where you can read the constitution. They left Ireland, England, everywhere for freedom of worship. Can I whisper? They said we don't want Catholicism. But it caught up with them in 1961, 62. When JFK became the first, they broke their own constitution. And since then, no other. Now Joe Biden. And you know what? If you scramble the words Biden, they spell in bed. That's Revelation 2.22. Are you listening? I will cast them into a bed of corruption. In bed, Biden. And as soon as Biden was inaugurated, he went to a Catholic church. He went to the Pope. These are great signs, folks. And then he wants to visit Jerusalem June, July. Mr. Biden. I believe that the blood moon of last week, the first one that fell smack bang into scripture is a warning to the land of Israel 
Because in Revelation 6, 12, when the tribulation begins, it also is announced by a blood moon. Write it down, Revelation 6, 12. And I'm closing in a few seconds. It's a warning to Israel, but it is also a great wake-up call to us. The moon types the bride. It's a blood moon. Yes, we should all be covered in the blood of Christ. Amen. It's our last warning before the rapture. So, as I conclude with my last scripture, and I'm smack bang on time, write down 2 Corinthians, you can't miss this one, 2 Corinthians 1.15. Don't miss this one. Paul is finally going to tell us why seconds are important. 2 Corinthians 1.15, Paul says, This letter do I write unto you, 2 Corinthians, This letter do I write unto you so that I may benefit you. So seconds are always for our benefit. Watch 2 Peter 3, 1, the last scripture. 2 Peter 3, 1. I write unto you, brethren, so that I may stir up your pure memories and remembrance. Are you stirred up this day? God bless you. Shall we close our eyes, bow our heads and pray? If I give over to Brother Gerald. Lord Jesus, I now see why you stopped the other message. Perhaps the other one would not have been this appropriate. But you've given us a fitting one for today. All honor, glory goes to you, dear Lord. No man can glory in your sight. You said, I'm a jealous God. And therefore, we want to respect you as our Father. Thank you for using the lips of clay to benefit your people. May we never miss these seconds. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Over to Brother Gerald. We love you. God bless you. You are most wonderful. Keep coming back. Amen.